What's up Grub Mudders? Today I'm bringing you a video, a uh, pretty special video. I've been waiting all summer long to bring you guys this video and it's winter. It just got done snowing so uh, now's the perfect time to bring it. So this video today is going to be what tools are essential for a concrete finisher or what tools should a finisher have in his bucket. So what tools should a concrete finisher have? Well let's start off with the basics. First off, Finisher should always have a pair of rubber boots. Don't ever show up to a job without a pair of rubber boots. It's just not right. Uh -huh. Obviously, a finisher should have some hand floats. These two are gold blatt floats, uh, wooden handle. Uh, I prefer the gold blatt. They're a little bit wider in a Marshalltown, but if you're a rookie or if you're a first year or second year finisher, I would prefer a red handled Marshalltown. But this Marshalltown is actually a resin float or a fiber float, some people call it. So uh, all three of these are essential. You want to have one of these for, for faces or curbs or anything. If the concrete starts getting away from you, if you put this on it and scrub it, it'll bring that cream right back up. And then you hit it with your mag and finish it. This right here, this is a mag too, but it's it's called a Darby. Wow. We call it Darby's, but I don't even really think it's a Darby. I look I, when I think of a Darby, I think of a wooden handled uh, Darby that you would use for cold joints. But this right here, thirty inch. It's a thirty inch Darby. I like to hit. I like to float my walls when I'm pouring out with this. And obviously, if you want to reach out and touch something, you can reach out and get it. Or, you can use your float as a leaner and really reach out there. So that covers floats. Now let's, what about trials? What's this? I don't even know what that is. I don't ever use these. You don't need one of those. <laughs> Unless you're gonna scoop the leaks up off the floor. You do want one of these. This is an 18 inch finish trial. This is really good for knocking down or hitting walls after you hit it with your float and then floating the wall tight. Very useful tool. So this is a 18 inch trial. This right here, this is an eight inch burner trial. You can see how this looks like an hourglass. This has some hours put in on it. But this works great for your last pass when you're slick trial on the floor. You can't forget the margin trial. Margin trials are great for putting in your back pocket. And you can hang your float off of it like a float hook. Some people say it's the most important tool for a concrete finisher, I don't think so. Obviously a finisher needs a good tape measure. I don't recommend getting a Pittsburgh. I recommend a Stanley Fat Max 25 footer but every finisher needs a tape measure. Every finisher needs a speed square. These work great when you need to cut a board. You can draw a line on it. You can put it like this and do your line. So every finisher should have a speed square and a pencil. Actually, go ahead and get about five pencils because you're going to lose them. Now let's go to levels. This is called a torpedo level. Um, they work great for steps, curbs, different things like that. You don't use them a lot, but you definitely use them. They're nice to have in your ba bag or your box. The four foot level. <laughs> now this bad boy, this gets used every single day. I can't stress enough how important it is to have a good four foot level in your bag or in your truck. Every finisher should have a good pair of safety glasses. We cut rebar, we cut concrete. You don't want to get anything in your eye. I've had that happen to me before and I had to go to the doctor and they had to actually physically take that out of my eyes. So keep you a nice good pair of safety glasses. Man, my knees hurt. Some people say you should have a good pair of knee pads. I don't use them. Um, I'm not going to be the butt end of a joke. Keep a pair of knee. What I prefer is the knee board. 
Now you can get a foam knee board, basically a four by eight sheet of styrofoam, and you cut them down into squares like this so you don't sink. Or you can use these knee boards, you can get 35 bucks for one at Lowe's. But they sure make it nice on your knees, even when you're not on the concrete. But this will keep you from sinking. You can get on concrete a little wetter. Very important to have as a finisher. What about this? A chalk line. Very, very useful tool. I recommend every finisher have a chalk box in their in their box. That way you can snap a line on a and make a rip on a board and get a perfectly straight line. If you can cut straight. <laughs> Every finisher should have, a, well, I'm not going to say every finisher should have, but most finishers like to have a good pair of gloves with this rubber on one side. Allows you to put them on, put your hand in the concrete, and throw it wherever you want to. And at the end of the day, you can take it off and you still got your girly hands. The guy I used to work for used to say, I got my gloves on, and he'd show his hands and they'd be all calloused up. Well, it's really smart to have some gloves. A drill. Now, I didn't say an impact, I said a drill. Every finisher should have a drill because you can still drive your screws in with the drill. Um, it's best to have an impact and a drill, but if you can only afford one, get you a good drill. Actually, don't get a good one, get a cheap one because we're going to be throwing these down in the mud. Uh, they're going to get beat up. So even if you buy a Milwaukee, it's probably only going to last you just as long as a Master Force. So every finisher should have a good drill. I was told that every finisher should have a wire brush, but the only time I ever use wire brushes is when I do exposed ag. So we could throw that over there. With the, we could throw that over there with the brick truck. A pair of pliers. Yeah, I do recommend you have a pair of pliers. A lot of times you'll be tying, tying wire. Uh, now they have those pneumatic guns and uh, electric battery operated wire tire tires but it's always good to have a nice pair of pliers you never know when you're going to need something like this you might have to pull a bolt something the georgia buggy or a wheelbarrow might lose a bolt you could tighten it up real quick with your pliers every finisher should have a pair of pliers now let's go to brushes obviously everybody knows what this brush is this is a scrub brush or a cleaning brush i think every finisher should have a good cleaning brush this right here is a touch-up broom. Works great for getting up against walls. Pretty self-explanatory. You can also clean tools with them. Great to have a touch-up brush. Every finisher should have a touch-up brush. This right here, it could be a touch-up brush as well. Or you can sweep up dirt with it. These have a lot of uses. You can flick water out on a slab whatever you need, but it's really good to have one of these type of brushes. Some people like to dip them down in their release buckets and throw release. That works pretty well too. Me, I just personally get my hand in there and throw it. I put a pair of latex gloves on sometimes if I have them, but every finisher should have a good brush like this. I don't know what this is called. If you know what this type of brush is called, leave it in the comment section below, please. I'd like to know. But every finisher should have a brush like this. paintbrush why would somebody need a paintbrush well I'm gonna tell you right now a finisher should keep a paintbrush in his bag for one and one reason only for when you're on some wet concrete say it uh, something in the shade and you got to get a, a, a broom on it you can brush really lightly with this broom brush real lightly and barely leave any marks you can't do that with any of these other brushes. So I suggest that every finisher keep a paintbrush with soft bristles in it. And I really don't think a finisher should have to supply a bull float or bull float handles. This right here, don't get one of these hammers. I mean, get an East Wing. Unfortunately, East Wing's handles get loose, but they never seem to really fall off. But don't get one with the curly. Get you a real hammer. I don't know how many ounces this is, but man, it doesn't say. But look at that. The reason I say get one like this is because when you have a nail and a board, you can put it in like that, and you can just bend it over instead of trying to yank it like that. 
old trade secret. Just put this in your nail and bend it over. Put it back on, bend it over again. And you can pull nails really good with this. Plus you can uh, drive stakes. You can endless things a hammer can be used for. So get you a good straight east wing, a big heavy one like that. Every finisher should have an east wing. <gasps> I'll keep this one around too. A mini sledge or a regular sledge, still with a short handle for driving stakes. Every finisher should have at least a mini sledge, if not a real a real sledge for driving stakes. I don't really like these and I don't like using a, a claw hammer to drive stakes. So every finisher should have a sledge hammer or a mini sledge. What about a tool bag? Nah, you don't need a tool bag. Wow. But every finisher should have a good string. Obviously, we know what a string's used for to run straight lines. Every finisher should have a good string. This is called a joiner. It's a 304. Yeah, three. Three eighty four. I don't know, it's a joiner. This is called a walking joiner. It's for shining your ribbons. But it's basically for tooling in these joints here. And uh, when you're out on knee boards. This walking joiner is pretty sweet because you can you can stand off the side of a pad, get it in your joint, and shine your joints. I don't think every finisher should have one of these, but they are sure nice to have in your bucket for those days when you shine your joints. Picture frame. I noticed that a lot of you a lot of states don't picture frame their joints, but in Indiana, it's the way to go. I don't like doing it, but um, in Indiana, it's the way they do it. So in Indiana, every finisher should have a shiner on a pole. But definitely have you a hand joiner. Every finisher should have a hand joiner. Pounding in them joints. Last but not least, we got edgers. This is a four inch standard edger. At least in Indiana, it's a standard edger. It's for um, the side of your concrete out there, just shining your edge or putting an edge in just to give it that rolled look. Every finisher should have a four inch edger. This right here, basically the same thing as a four inch edger, but it's a six inch edger. Every rookie finisher should be using six inch edgers because when you edge the side of a slab, it's a lot harder to roll it. Rolling it means that you turned it one way or the other and it's just not straight. You don't want that, you want a straight edge. So every rookie finisher should have a six inch edger. This right here, we don't use these much in Indiana. This is called a walking edger. It works like this. I put this in here because uh, I noticed in every other state, everybody's using these. so. Every finisher should have a good walking edger. If you're still watching this, I appreciate it. It means you support Grub Mug Concrete. If you would, do me a favor and give this a thumbs up. As always, thank you for your support. Make the best of what you got. Don't take a moment for granted.